Oh, yeah. Now we're live. Hey, everybody. We're live. This is Homes at Home. We are back after a nice long weekend. How was everyone's long weekend here in Canada? And if you're in the States, hope you had a great weekend. Yeah, ours was pretty relaxing, actually. Last week, we were so busy. And um, we we took the weekend to actually turn off our phones and spend as little time as possible on the computer mm -hmm. and really just be outside and be present. So we really enjoyed our Victoria Day long weekend. Yeah, it was. Uh, we definitely needed that. Yeah, adulting styles. Normally, you know, growing up, I feel like the long weekend was about partying, and now we're like sleeping in. <laughs> yeah, let's sleep and read this Ooh, weekend. That sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, for us, I mean, since, you know, with isolation, a little uh, little update for everyone. We've still been kind of trying to keep traditions like uh, pizza night. Pizza night's yeah, a very yeah. important. Saturdays are our margaritas with margaritas night. So <laughs> margarita pizzas with margaritas. margarita drinks. Yeah. Um, we actually, when we were living in BC, we would always go out to a restaurant in Vancouver uh, called Neekly. Mm -hmm. Every Saturday night, we had a we had a, 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 a table reserved for us, mm -hmm. and we walked in, and they always knew what we were having, and we would always take a pizza each to go to. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So other traditions. What are what else are we maintaining for just like some semblance um, of? Saturday, Saturday margaritas, cauliflower all wings, Sunday brunch. We Sunday always brunch. do a really nice Sunday mm. brunch um, with mimosas or or just or tea. sometimes water or tea. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> no, non alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So Michael has this recipe where he makes these um pan like these uh, potato hash browns mm. from scratch, yeah. and they're amazing. So the trick to that, I think, that well, maybe we should share it with them later sure right? we can share a recipe but i was just going to say is that one staple that i think that gets so underappreciated or undervalued most of the time is a food processor the amount of things that you can do with a food processor is incredible yeah. so that's what that's like my favorite one of my favorite tools in the kitchen is a food pro processor yeah food processors have been uh we've been using it a lot so yeah. i mean what other, have you guys been doing yeah Let's, tell us your favorite recipes and traditions and if you've made some new ones during this period that that would i could we, we'd be happy to hear some yeah yeah so we've we been, can try some too we've been making all kinds of things yeah. but uh one thing i'm worried about actually is michael's hair i was just gonna say that because <laughs> i'm looking at it and i'm like i still feel like i'm wearing a helmet or like i'm one of the beatles maybe i could <laughs> yeah like so have you guys done any any wild haircuts? Yeah, quarantine haircuts. Yeah. What do we got here? Keiko's got trimmed two weeks ago or last week. Yeah. And I have half a mind to take the same clippers that I took to my standard poodle and put them on Michael's. <laughs> yeah, honestly, part of me, if okay, if first of all, if you've done a, oh, Chad, what's going on, Chad? Um, Chad, we work with him for in the From home free. Yeah, yeah. Um, so hmm. if you've done a, a quarantine haircut, let us know in the comments yeah. and let us know if it went well because we're thinking about it. And any tips because I really do like Michael's hair long. It's just getting a little wilder on the the, the sides. Yeah, the side and the edges, the area you know, the, and the neck. The neck and like on the top of the head. But like your hair is, it does have a little bit of wave to it. So I feel like if we start pulling it backwards and training it or we just cover it up with the hat. Yeah, <laughs> we could do that. We could do some, maybe you guys can help us uh, yeah. with some hat suggestions. Yeah. Good, Good afternoon, afternoon, James. Okay, so here, my favorite hat is when I'll go get it. Okay. You're gonna help us out. You're gonna help me look better. Okay, so this is Michael's like really cool boy hat. I like it when he wears it on backwards. And okay, so, his head is massive. Yeah, it's massive. <laughs> okay, like this. This is how I like Michael. Oh, sorry, sorry. You can do it cool. Yeah, so cool. So backwards. Style option number one. Okay, let's have a vote, folks. So this comment is option number in the, one. Comment in the comment section. Yeah, because we need <laughs> Best help. Hat selection. Moving forward for homes at home, I need to know uh, how I'm going to look. So that's okay. number one. Number two, mm, it's okay. Number I like two. it. Can you can you put it on your head loosely frontwards like this? I kind of like it when you have it like that too. Just like when I sit on my head? Yeah, yeah, like that. I like that. So that's option three. Make Mohawk's hair on my <laughs> James, I don't know if Mohawk would look very good. Maybe I'll just buzz it. So that's option, no, that was option two. Oh yeah, three. three. And then And then okay, then this is my other favorite one that Michael wears often in the garden. <laughs> yeah, this is my like gardening outside <laughs> protect my rosy skin hat. Yeah. A little bucket hat. Oh, crocodile dundee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, but I think I yeah, pull it, pull it. Okay, see, it has it has buttons. You can actually have it like this. 
See, it's fashionable. <laughs> for extra sun protection for Keeps his the... very pale skin. Yeah. Or the cloud. Oh, we can do a one-sided. Oh, one all the side. options. See? There's so many options. There's like 10 <laughs> options in there. That's a winner, Ricardo said. Okay, that's good to know. Now we know <laughs> yeah. hat options are a go. Boy. The most professional for when we're going live with all of you. Yeah, Crystal, <laughs> business. I am not doing a bull haircut. Gail, Gail says keep it long. I agree. Okay. All right, all right. This is I this agree. is good. We're, we're, we're building off of this now. Oh, a moule, the nicer version of a mullet, Dave says. I've never heard of a moule before. Yeah, Dave, I'm going to look into that because yeah. I also haven't heard of that. So far, number one, hat on backwards is the is the bigger the biggest winner. Yeah. Okay, so we do want to know what recipes you've been cooking up uh, during isolations because... We're going backwards. We're going backwards. Uh, <laughs> All just, this guy thinks about his food. <laughs> I do. Actually, it's bad. Um, but I wanted to say because there was one thing I forgot to say. We've been doing a lot of different variations of like mm. tacos. So we've been doing um, like jackfruit tacos, mm -hmm. uh, mushroom tacos, um, cauliflower tacos, all the tacos. So maybe tacos we can share that with great, you guys. You can have a lot of a lot of options. Yeah. In terms of variety, so I never get bored of tacos. I can have tacos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can have a burrito, put some egg in there. Mm. You never know. Mm. Mm. Uh, and. So oh, bald like dad. You know what? Big Mike is actually not even bald. That's yeah. the thing is that he actually used to just buzz his hair so short. And then a couple of years, I'd say about a year ago or two years ago, he started growing it long again. And I really like the long hair on your dad. And it's funny it's because sharp. so many people are like, oh, your dad got a hair transplant. Like plugs. Or something. Yeah, he got plugs. It's like, no, he just, <laughs> he actually for whatever just reason. Was, he was shaving his whole head before. Yeah, which actually, you know what? I have a funny story about uh, growing my hair because... The other time in my life when I actually grew up, my hair was in high school. You know, when wings were a thing and longer hair. And then I was with my dad one one time working for him. And he's like, oh, we're, let's go for a drive. So I hop in the truck and we're, I'm like, where are we going? And he goes, we're going to cut your hair. I was like, well, no, I like my hair. He goes, you're going to like it better short. And then I cut short ever my since. hair. There you go. So, so I think it was, oh, I missed the name, but someone was looking for, yeah, yeah, Sally was looking for my spaghetti squash recipe. That's no problem. I'm happy to share that. I actually get a lot of questions about the recipes that I made on season one and two of Homes and Homes. So maybe I should, I actually kind of did put a little collection together. Maybe I need to dust that off and bring it back to life for all of you folks, especially because I think season one is air, has aired on HETV US now. So mm -hmm. there's a whole new demographic of people who are seeing the show for the first time that we can, that are asking for the recipes. So I'll, mm. I'm happy to share all that. Kevin says, we love making pizzas out of portobello mushrooms as the crust. Mm. That's brilliant. So smart and so delicious and healthy. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. potato soup. Honestly, potatoes are so versatile. The most underrated. Yeah, like a, I. A vegetable, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. I make, um like, a, what's the what's the potato soup that I make? Honey? Leek and potato Le soup? Yeah, potato and leek soup. Mm. It was so good. Yeah, it really so was. Mm -hmm. So now that we've got some uh, recipes out there, yeah. you guys have shared some. So we're going to try some of these, and uh, hopefully you'll be inspired by some of ours. Mm, stuffed quinoa peppers. Mm. Ooh, that's actually a great idea for dinner tonight. I haven't had a stuffed pepper in so long. And I like the option of using quinoa instead of rice, Tara, because there's uh, more protein in quinoa. It's a whole protein, so that's really cool. I like that idea. Sounds delicious. Cool. Thanks for sharing, guys. Honestly, but uh, have you guys found that between grocery shopping, cooking, three meals a day plus snacks you know depending on how many people are even in your household plus cleaning it all and then doing a full job on top of it has just kept you like completely busy every day five to seven days a week yeah. i find that we are working like just non-stop all the like every day we have so much work to do in terms of like our own property that we're doing we're filming we're you know we have emails and meetings and lives that we get to have you know fun with and engage with everyone but on top of that we're cooking and finding new recipes and cleaning. And it's like this like full-time job now. Yeah. You, we used to just have such more of like a fast paced life. Yeah. It's like a, a rhythm. But it's now like, okay, we're come. doing it all. Like, like we, it's not so fast foodish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're eating healthy foods. Yeah. We're eating healthy foods and it takes a long time and a lot of dishes. Yeah. Yeah. But, but we are, you know, we have a lot of projects that we are working on. We were actually live a couple weeks ago talking about our raised garden beds on HGTV US. And then last week we were live talking about our pergolas and deck and like things around the property, all garden related, because right now it's that season. Spring is the time of year to get outside and, um, and, and work on your property. So that's what we've been focusing on. So a little few updates for you guys. The gardens yeah. come along really nicely. It's still not quite finished. We had a lot of rain 
last week. So it was really hard moving the wheelbarrow across the property because we don't want to damage the lawn. Yeah. So yeah, between the rain mm -hmm. and the snow we've had, it, it's really slowed the project down a little bit. So, uh, but we're still making moves. Still making moves. So far, we've laid down the um, the uh, the cardboard. Mm -hmm. And the landscape and the fabric. landscape fabric and now what we have to do is cap it off and seal it so that it's it doesn't move and then mm -hmm. uh, oh we also filled it with three-quarter crash three-quarter clear clear oh mm. gosh I always yeah so we, we're doing that for drainage on the bottom but we do have a little picture uh in case you missed it here yeah so that's before we put the um landscape landscape fabric, fabric mm -hmm. in the cardboard down mm -hmm. so it's we're, we are making some progress we're, yeah. we're doing lots uh lots we're of other away. things around the house as well but yeah. there is another video uh that we are working on getting out to oh everyone. yeah well that's actually sorry i you reminded me honey we've actually been filming this whole thing so it's a little bit of a teaser for what's to come mm -hmm. we are documenting our whole garden experience mm -hmm. and so we're putting it together and we will be sharing all the steps on how to do it with you soon um and and so that's one video that we have to look forward to to sharing with you guys and another video that's so close to our hearts is this one that michael's yes. gonna share with you yeah so uh last year i worked with paul from canadian woodworks and i built lisa marie a rocking chair for our second Second year anniversary. Second year anniversary, hun. Yeah, it's second year anniversary. So <laughs> you were so delayed. Yeah. Well, I had to think. I'm like, was it second? Was it third? So built a rocking chair, and it was the most difficult woodworking project that I've ever done. It's the biggest, too, and, and the biggest. Yeah, yeah because it, it was so complex. But with mm. the help of Paul, um, he had so many jigs, so many tools to help along, and uh, he he made it a lot easier. And I learned so much building this. Well, that's his like specialty is to make rocking chairs, right? Like yeah. he's made this seventy times. Before, yeah, seventy right? some odd times. He says by the time he makes a hundred, he should be an expert because you need about ten thousand hours, um, and it's a hundred hours per chair. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow, so hundred hours per chair. That's yeah. a lot of days. Yeah, I think I put in like a hundred and twenty into this chair because. Yeah. I don't do it every day. Anyway, yeah. we have a little video uh, just teasing the clip here. Um, Something to look forward to because it's so cool how we made it. So mm -hmm. if you guys like woodworking, woodworking, Mike Holmes Jr. Love. building stuff, love, <laughs> Check this like video it. out. And I think what people don't understand is when working with wood, wood has a very high expansion and contraction rate. Yes. So if you, let's say, build something that still has a high moisture content, once that dries out, it shrinks. It shrinks. Yeah. That's a problem, which is why now you're taking the time to go through yeah. and actually go through the steps of, okay, we have the proper moisture content. Now we can work with it. Yeah. So that's good music in the background too. I was getting, um, I wanted to dance. Da, 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 da. So this, it's a black walnut rocking chair and there was some old growth Southern yellow pine that we also use for the backers. Um, and there's some special reasons mm. why that means a lot. Maybe we, we share it now, or do, what do you think? Share it now or share it, Ooh. wait for the video? Oh my goodness. Well, I think share it now. Okay. Why not? Well, uh, so the story of the rocking chair is so sweet. Mm -hmm. So it all started with, um, a dream, a dream. <laughs> when we first started dating, actually, at least would always say, uh, I want a rocking chair one day mm -hmm. to rock our kids in, you know, whether when she's pregnant or where the kids are born, yeah. uh, just to sing to them, read to them. I just uh, think that a rocking chair is so romantic mm -hmm. and, um, timeless. I feel like maybe every baby deserves to be rocked in a little rocking chair, you know? So it was just something that I just fantasized about just one day when, when we were ready to have kids, it'd be cool to get a rocking chair. That was always what I kind of, some people think of how they're going to decorate the room. I think others think of you know clothes or whatever mm -hmm. and for me my thing was always having a rocking chair something that I can really just you know hold my family in mm -hmm. so then I saw Paul's rocking chair this was you know close to the time that I found out about Lisa's and I thought okay one day I'm gonna build about Lisa's what that you wanted a rocking chair Oh, did I say something? Did I say? Sounds like you're announcing that we're pregnant. No, we are not, we're not pregnant. pregnant. We're not, pregnant. <laughs> um, okay. not pregnant. But anyway, maybe one day. Maybe. Now that the rocking chair is here. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, I saw Paul's rocking chair and it was the most beautiful rocking chair I've ever seen. So I told myself one day mm -hmm. I'm going to build my wife a rocking chair. There you go. And so you teamed up with? Paul from Canadian Woodworks, yeah. and we built this rocking chair. To, well, he built a rocking chair while well, I built a rocking chair, so we kind of built rocking yeah. chairs together. They're like brothers yeah. or sisters or siblings. Yeah, and the the 
selection of the wood is also really precious as well because mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather actually came to Canada when he was in his early 20s from England and he worked with the Hudson's Bay Company up in Musini and he lived amongst the Cree and for years became um, you know really close friends and family with that um, with that neck of the woods. Mm -hmm. And so the Hudson's Bay Company has, you know, had this a little bit of an impact because it's what brought my grandpa across um, to Canada. And so um, I, you know, Michael knew that. And, and when he heard of that, there's this, there's this beam you had heard someone had said, yeah, right? well, it was at, uh, I was actually at an event and one of the guys was talking about, oh, we got our hands on this really cool beam from the Hudson's Bay <laughs> Company. And it was the original building. So this piece of wood, this old growth southern yellow pine, was four. It's about four hundred years old. Mm. And they got their hands on this beam. And I said, "I'm like, I need a piece of that beam. I need to. That needs to be a part of the build for this rocking chair." And this was even before I was confirmed building the rocking right. chair that year. You just but knew that you wanted your hands on that piece of wood. Right? Yeah, yeah, and it all started there. And then. From there, worked with Paul yeah. to build this rocking chair, and so I'm so excited. I can't, I can't wait for you to see. We won't tell you where it's been integrated, mm -hmm. and then we won't we won't share all the stories of the black walnut and why Michael chose the rest of the chair to be yeah. made of black walnut. There's, you know, we have to leave some cliffhangers for you guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, yeah, so this rocking chair, we're super excited. Uh, the video will be coming out soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, it's really, I'm really proud and. It, I when I when I received it when Michael gifted it to me for our second year anniversary I just cried for like an hour. <laughs> that was I'm the like, reaction I was hoping for. Yeah, <laughs> I don't cry often, but when I do, oh baby, mm -hmm. waterworks. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. So that is what we have coming down the pipeline. Yeah, so there's was, some exciting stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how have you guys been being you know entertained? What what channels have you turned to? Are you watching any new shows? Are you on YouTube more often? What, like, what are you guys you're joining us live, which we love. We love when you you tune in and join us mm -hmm. and ask questions and engage with us. Thank you so much. Uh, Roger says, can you Frank a Tim Horton? Can you drink a Tim Horton's coffee for me? Sure. Where are you? Where are you, Roger, that you can't get one yourself? Are you in the States or across the pond? Let us know where you are. Uh, we'll for sure Drink a Timmy's for you. I mean, right now I have a, we have a, tea. Have a tea. There you go. But I will drink a Timmy's for you. Randy asked, did you put the cardboard down first or on top? We put the cardboard first. Mm -hmm. So um, like, against the soil. Like acting as the first line of defense. Correct. And then we and then we put the um, landscape, landscape fabric. fabric. I always forget that word for some reason. Right. The landscape fabric on top of the cardboard. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. So um, – Bigger than the walnut. Di yeah. Mm. Hour wise. And uh, so Randy asked. Complexity. Yeah. Is this, was the rocket chair bigger than the walnut dining table? Um, I did build a, I built two dining room tables now out of black walnut. And uh, yeah, this was a much bigger project. It's so complex with all of the, um, with all of the joinery and the different yeah. uh, techniques that I wasn't used to. Yeah. Merle says he's uh, tuning in, watching lots of uh, live YouTube streams. Mm. So there you go. Thanks for joining ours. Yeah. <laughs> DIY, watching oldies about goodies of home show. Oh, those are the best, eh, Renee? Yeah, you'll see young young Michael on yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what else have you guys been doing? What have you been doing to Watch keep active? Inspection. Yeah. Have you guys been doing home workouts? Or, you know, for me, gardening actually is my workout. <laughs> yeah, we've been going for runs. Um, yeah. I'd say other than that, like I, I just set up my gym actually in, mm -hmm. in the shop. So I'm really excited to get using that, but I haven't yet. So yeah. Uh, what can you do? Cool. What's a good, uh, great question, Ricardo. What's a good landscape fabric to use? Michael would know that. So there are a couple different brands, um, of landscape fabric. I believe Scott's makes one, um, Does it really CIL makes, I think there's, there's a lot of good ones. There is like, if you want to really step up your game, there's a high, I, try, I can't think of the brand, uh, but I'll try and get back to you. But there's like a very, I feel like bulletproof landscape fabric that you can use. One trick that I realized when we were applying the landscape fabric is uh, the width of it is really important. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you have your measurements and the size of the area that you want to put the landscape fabric down in. And because if you have one that's too narrow, you're going to be using a lot more and you'll go through that roll faster. Yeah. Whereas if you buy one that's wider, you can actually just do the coverage with one, one swoop. Sally says, I've been watching online hockey reruns. Oh, that's fun. And a musician. And musician. That's awesome. Scott Erickson is doing a lot of online concerts. That's awesome. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. Cooking, Cooking from, from chef's, chef's plate. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Cool. 
What's the cardboard for? Tara asks. Ta uh, so Tara, in one of our lives that we did on HGTV US, um, we talked about the benefits of a raised garden bed and, mm. and the supplies and the kind of the tools that you need to to have one that doesn't have a lot of like you know the grass from popping up so landscape fabric is what you know we all know is traditionally used for just to prevent the the grass and the weeds from growing up through the garden beds um what what my family does and what i was taught is to put a layer of cardboard down first and so that's actually a, an extra buffer and some people say it's actually more effective than the landscape fabric too so yeah so we, we decided, just double down exactly exactly we're doing both cool well, if you have any more questions or comments, uh, leave it in the comment section below yeah. and we will do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. And we do post a lot to our Instagram accounts. We do a lot of lives on Instagram and we're mm -hmm. you know, always updating our walls and stories. So head over to my Instagram if you guys have, if you guys wanna you know, check in and see what we're up to. It's lisa.marie.holmes and Michael's is way easier. Just Mike Holmes Jr. There you go, cool. Well, thanks so much for joining us. This has been so much fun. We uh, we have to get back to work. So yeah, we got we're actually picking up a fence right now, a secondhand old wrought iron fence yeah. that someone was getting rid of. So we need to go get the trailer, load it up, shimmy it in. Yeah, we thought, you know what? There's always a, we we have some property, so there's a, there's a home for it here. Yeah. Which just needs a little love. That's what we love doing is repurposing. So we're going to figure out. So again, that will make it probably, you know, we're gonna be filming that. So yeah. just stay tuned. We have so many fun things to share with you guys and we, we love um, having you along for the journey. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Mwah.